Hi, small groups. So glad you can join us tonight for the teaching series we've been going through. I'm Krista Clark, one of the associate pastors at Abundant Life, and we're going to be talking about this journey through the Bible and looking at Ephesians, and we're looking at what do good relationships look like. And what I'm going to talk about tonight is how a good relationship with the world and your words can help worldly people find a good relationship with Jesus. So we're going to talk about that. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about how I was not always very good with relationships. Um, it kind of reminded me of the movie Mean Girls. Do you know that movie? It's a movie that, um, it's a comedy, but it's about a bunch of girls that are in high school and they're popular and they have a very exclusive club and they're kind of mean. And unfortunately that was kind of where I was when I was in high school. Um, but by my senior year, I got kicked out of the exclusive club and so I got to know what it was like to be on the other side of being rejected and have hurtful words being said which I probably had said before so I knew what it was like but what happened um, during that time whenever I became outside the group the Lord began to work on me and that's when I really began to know Jesus and I began to have a transformation of my heart to really love people and see people that Jesus gave me that heart to just love people and go after them and and that was my senior year so actually it was a good thing that I was kicked out of the Mean Girls Club. So tonight let's take a look at the scriptures that this is a, um, we're going to talk about. We're going to look at Ephesians 2 11 through 19. Now this is kind of a long scripture text so try to stay with me and stay focused. I'll try to you know sing and dance I don't know but I'll try to give it to where it's not so boring therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision which is made in the flesh by hands remember that you were at one time separated from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world but now in Christ Jesus you who were once afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two. So making peace and might reconcile us both Jews and Gentiles to God in one body through the cross thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer stra strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. I wanna look at three points tonight about this text. And we're talking about how do we reach out to the world and be a pattern of Jesus and love people and and show them with our words and our actions what Jesus is like so that they can be reconciled with Jesus. Number one, the Gentiles had been outsiders. The Jews had had an exclusive club, but Jesus changed all of that. Both the Jews and the Gentiles needed a savior. They needed redemption. Both Jews and Gentiles needed redemption, and that was going to be received through Christ by faith. Apostle Paul said in Romans 5.1, we have been justified through faith, and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus made peace between Father God and the Jews. Jesus made peace between Father God and the Gentiles, and Jesus made peace between Jews and Gentiles. So that's what Jesus was here to do. He was here to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. You know, when I got kicked out of the popular girls club, I met Jesus in such a way that I saw my need for him. And I saw the, even though I had grown up in the church, I was saved at the age of 10, but I wasn't a very nice person. And I didn't really recognize my need for a savior. But both Jews and Gentiles need a savior. And I began to see I needed a savior and everyone around me needed a savior. They needed Jesus. The second thing I'd like to mention is once we have peace with God, 
we have the peace of God, and this changes everything. When we understand who God is, then we understand who we are in Christ, and we can have that security, and we can be secure enough to reach out and love people well. We can be confident and bold in that. And another thing I'd like to mention, number three, when we understand that we are all a part of the household of faith, we want everyone to come into our house. We have compassion and want others to experience the peace and love of God that we are experiencing. When we want to share the words of Apostle Paul in Romans 3.23, this is what we need to do is we need to share these words that says, all have sinned and fall short. So that's a very inclusive, that's all of us. We've all sinned and fallen short. And then in Galatians 3.28, Paul says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free. There is not male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Everyone is invited to Jesus's table. We're all the cool kids. We get to be in the club. We're all part of who Jesus, um, Jesus's family as we just receive him as our savior and our Lord. As we grow in the body of Christ and find healthy covenant relationships, more and more of our friends are going to be Christian friends. And that's not a bad thing. We want healthy, good Christian covenant relationships that we can depend on and that we're loyal to. But at the same time, if we're not careful, we will become just another exclusive club. And we don't wanna be mean girls. We don't wanna do that. Um, we want to be sure that we have a bigger circle uh, that we can uh, love people well. We need to make friends with and hang out with people that are unlike us, um, people that are sinners, people that are unbelievers. Jesus did this. In Mark 2.15 it says Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house and many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, and for, for there were many who followed him. The people of the world who were struggling, who were hurting, they followed Jesus. They loved Jesus because Jesus showed them love. Jesus saw them. Jesus knew them. Worldly people like Jesus because Jesus loved and accepted them, and he saw them, he took an interest in them, and he just talked to them. We need to find some non-believers, those who have never known Jesus and those who have fallen into unbelief. And we need to tell them that they no longer have to live, and here's the scripture, with no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, all of us who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down the dividing wall of hostility. He has given us peace with God and peace of God through the cross, thereby killing the hostility for through him, we all have access in one spirit to the father. So then we all are no longer strangers and aliens, but all of us are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. What kind of world would we live in if we all knew or th believed that we were all part of the household of God? If we saw ourselves as fellow citizens and members of the household of God? When we invite those unlike us to sit at our table, we need to make sure that our vocabulary, the things that we are saying, is not just religious phrases, um, is not checking boxes that we say all the right spiritual things. If we're saying religious phrases that people can't relate to, they're going to feel like an outsider because they don't know the language. They don't know the inside's words. So it's really important to just make sure that we see who's at the table, see who we've invited in, and just be aware of what their needs are and how they talk and where. listen well. Listen well. It's so important. Um, when we are meeting people where they are, we need to keep our words positive and full of faith. You know, when you're trying to 
relate to people sometimes we'll try to okay we're going to get down in the trenches with them and and we're going to you know feel what they feel but it, it's important not to get into whining or complaining or fear-filled words that sometimes exist down in the trenches so we want to keep our words positive we want to keep our words um, important loving meaningful not be a complainer or a whiner and we must listen well this will help us know what words to say we listen well and then we speak those sanctified faith words that inspire people and cause them to want what we have a life of joy a life of peace and hope and love and another way to just connect with people is simply to share our stories share our testimony of how jesus changed our life that's a really good powerful way when you hear someone sharing their story and then you share your story and you just share with them how Jesus saved you and how he is with you every day. So tonight I just want to uh, say a prayer before us before I close out. Um, just pray with me. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, give us revelation of who you are in Christ so that we can love people well. I pray that you would place people in our lives who are unlike us, who need Jesus, and then open our eyes to the people around us so that we can love them well. Give us positive faith words of encouragement so that we can love people well. And let the fruit of the Spirit be manifested through us so that we can love people well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. There are questions at the end that will be there for group discussion. And I just really thank you for tuning in and learning about how your words can help worldly people find a good relationship with Jesus.